our viral series. And if you recall from last week, the aim of this series is to help us play our part in getting the gospel, the, the message of Jesus Christ, to, to go viral. Uh, it's about evangelism and how each and every one of us can be a part of it. Um, and that's exciting because that's at the very heart of God and what God is doing on the earth. And, and if you recall from last week, we saw that building relationships is a very important way that God has given to us as a way of having the gospel spread and go viral. So we, we saw that if, if we as Christians build relationships with people who are not Christians, and, and we live a life that is authentic, that is inviting, uh, that is, um, we're not perfect, we're real, and, and, and through that our faith comes out and we share our faith, we help people along that journey of faith. Um, and we also saw that we can invite them to gatherings such as life group or uh, a Sunday service like this where we as Christians are gathering, but we're saying, hey man, we would love for you to join us as well. So that's the friendship um, dynamic of how we can be part of the gospel going viral. I read a great story uh, last week, and it goes like this. When our eldest son, Joel, was about to start elementary school, Hannah and I lived in a city in England where we could choose between different schools. We wanted him to go to the nearest one within walking distance of our home, but many people at our church discouraged us. There are almost no Christians at that school. Nevertheless, feeling prompted by God to investigate, we met the new principal and really connected with her. The school seemed to be well run, mildly eccentric, and had good results, so we went for it. As we got involved, we found great favor with the principal, and thus the staff and many parents. Because the school had no buses, we met and became friends with many families as we walked Joel to and from school and intentionally made time to linger in the school playground with other parents. Gradually, more and more God conversations began to happen, and we ended up starting a kids' club for all the families who were interested in fun ways for their children to learn about Jesus. The principal allowed us to advertise and even run sign-up tables as parents gathered after school. In addition, I was drawn into the leadership of the school, and I ended up chairing the school's governing board. This enabled me to work closely with the principal, including being involved in all new staff appointments. Today, seven years after we left, the school has a very strong Christian influence, and new generations of families are being drawn to Christ as a result. For our family, that school became our primary place of mission as we grew to know and love the community there. But the real opening came about because of the favor the principal showed us. She was our person of peace. And this is from a book entitled The Viral Gospel by Alex Absalom, and you can download, download it for free from exponential.org. The truth is, it isn't easy to make friends with non-Christians sometimes. Would anyone agree that it's not always easy to build those meaningful relationships that lead to sharing about faith and people coming to know Jesus. And this is where the pushback can come. 
It's not that easy. It's hard. How do we actually do it? And this week, we're going to look at this exciting and powerful relational concept found in the Bible, the idea of a person of peace as someone who can enable the spread of the gospel. And we see this in Luke chapter 10. After Jesus made some fairly bold statements about what it takes to follow him, he sends out a group of 72. And this is what it says in verses 1 up until 9. After this, the Lord appointed 72 others and sent them two by two ahead of him to every town and place where he was about to go. He told them, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into his harvest field. Go, I am sending you out like lambs among wolves. Do not take a purse or bag or sandals and do not greet anyone on the road. When you enter a house, first say, peace to this house. If someone who promotes peace is there, your peace will rest on them. If not, it will return to you. Stay there eating and drinking whatever they give you, for the worker deserves his wages. Do not move from house to house. When you enter a town and are welcomed, eat what is offered to you, heal the sick who are there and tell them the kingdom of God has come near to you. In the previous chapter, Jesus had sent out the 12 apostles on a similar mission. Now he appoints 72 more of his followers and sends them out. Unlike the 12 apostles, this group of 72, we don't even know their names. Yet, they were important to Jesus in the spreading of the gospel. So even before Jesus died, even before he rose from the dead and he ascended into heaven, and we've been singing these amazing songs about the cross and the power and majesty of God. Even before that, Jesus was saying, for the gospel to, to go forward, for the gospel to go viral, it will actually require some unnamed heroes. We don't know their names. They're not up on the stage. But we need them and we need to mobilize them and send them out so that the gospel would spread. Amen. As he does this, he says, you must go out two by two. That speaks of team. Don't, don't do this on your own. You need someone that you can pair up with because there is, there is strength in, in that unity, in that being together and moving together for the purposes of God to see the gospel going forward. He told them the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. That is, the number of people that need to be reached with the gospel are very many compared to the number of people who are actually spreading the gospel. Harvest is plenty, workers are few. And, and what's his solution? Well, he says, pray. Pray to the Lord of the harvest to deal with that. You need to reach out to God. And I think this reality of harvest being plenty, workers being few, back then is true today. The harvest is still plenty. In fact, the world population today is way greater than it was back then. And we still need workers and more workers. And that's why Jesus says, 
I'm sending out a, a 72 group that actually, maybe they, their names will never be written in some book, but they are written in the book of life. And God has seen, and He is rejoicing over their work. Pray. Ask the Lord of the harvest. As, as we read the Bible, we see that throughout the, the New Testament, the, the spreading of the gospel goes hand in hand with prayer. Prayer and gospel spreading, prayer and the gospel going forward, that, that's, they, they, they go hand in hand, and we've been saying this week in and week out, emphasizing that if we really are going to have an impact, if really the gospel will go forward, it needs to be backed with prayer. Prayer is how we access the backing of heaven. Prayer is how we access the power of God so that this gospel would spread and go viral. So we need to be a praying people. And then he tells them to go. For Jesus, the spreading of the gospel involved going. Go into the houses. Go into the towns. We're not supposed to wait for people to come to us. By the time someone comes here on a Sunday, it's actually because you've gone and said, hey, my friend, you know what? I think there might be something good that you could receive in our community. You've gone first, then they'll come. So he says, you must go. You must go and do this work. It's, it's like what Jesus did. What did Jesus do? Well, he, he went. Jesus left heaven. Jesus came and took on, on flesh, and he lived among us. He didn't stay in the splendor and the glory and the majesty of heaven. He came into the brokenness and the despair of the world. He went, he came, and he says, as I came, so you too must go. Go to your neighbor, go to your colleague, go to your schoolmate. You must go. Think of a newspaper vendor tomorrow morning on your way to work. It would be strange if there was some great news that's happened in Tanzania and this newspaper vendor gets his newspapers and then he goes home and says, you know what, I'm just going to wait for people to come and look for me. He's like, man, I, I need to hit the streets. I, I need to go. I need to find someone. I need to, to, to actually make some people uncomfortable. And say, hey, listen, do you want to buy this? And I'm going to knock on some windows at, at Mwenge, traffic lights. And you're like, mm, no. And he's going to do what he can. He's got to stall somewhere where he's saying, I'm here. I've brought the news. And it's the same with us, with the gospel. We go. We take it out. It's a message to go with. And Jesus makes it clear that the going is into a tough environment. He says, like lambs among wolves. I'm sending you like lambs among wolves. Now, what do wolves do to lambs in the worst case scenario? They eat them. Wolves are stronger than lambs. Wolves are ferocious. And sometimes we refuse to go because of how tough it is to reach out to non-Christians. But we must still go. We must still make the effort. Dear friends, let's remember that when Jesus went, it involved going into an environment where he would be rejected, where he would be falsely accused, where he would be betrayed, where he would be insulted, where he would be whipped, where he would be brutally killed on a cross. That's the environment into which Jesus went. That sounds like lambs among wolves. In fact, John the Baptist called Jesus the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Jesus knows what it's like to be a lamb among wolves. But in the midst of that, Jesus had great impact. People were receptive to what he did. The gospel goes viral, and so did his disciples. So could these 72, and so can we as they prayed, as they trusted God, as they asked Him for courage, as they asked Him for strength. Now let's get to this concept of the man of peace. Verses 5 to 7. 
When you enter a house, first say, peace to this house. If someone who promotes peace is there, your peace will rest on them. If not, it will return to you. Stay there eating and drinking whatever they give you, for the worker deserves his wages. Do not move around from house to house. For Jesus, the reason that these 72 could have an impact was by connecting with the right person. Jesus was telling his disciples that the key to unlocking their mission was to find someone who promotes peace. If you find someone who promotes peace, that's a gateway. You get to a house and you say, peace to this house. Salama jirani. Is there someone there who promotes peace? In other words, is there someone there who receives you well? This person is widely referred to as the person of peace. And as Jesus' sent ones, we are bringing peace. Amen. Jesus is called the Prince of Peace, Isaiah chapter 9. We represent him to bring peace. We are carrying it on his behalf. And we are looking for people who, although they are not following Jesus, they are nevertheless promoting peace. The Lord of the harvest, whom we have prayed to, has already began to do something in them. The Lord of the heart of the harvest that we're praying to has already began to do something in their hearts so that they would be ready to receive us well. Now there will be some houses where you say peace be with you, salam adirani, and the response isn't going to be that great. It might even be hostile and, and it and it might take some work to knock there and, and knock there and try and build relationship there, try there, and it might go well there. They might, they, they, there's going to be disappointments. But, but as we trust the Lord of the harvest, we keep persevering, we keep believing, we keep saying, I, I believe that there is someone. This is the Lord's harvest. He is the one who's doing this. Surely he must have prepared someone. So we're going to persevere. We're going to keep seeking. We're going to keep asking. We're going to keep asking the Holy Spirit to lead until the Lord shows us where are these people of peace? Where is that person that can be a gateway for the gospel to go viral? So let's not give up. We keep going. And Jesus says that when you find this person of peace, stay there. Eat and drink what they give you. That means be flexible. It's no, you know, I don't eat that. No, you, 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 you're flexible. Wow. You know, sometimes you, you, you might see food and you're like, I'm not sure, Lord... This is your work. Please help me. And on we go. We're flexible. We're like, man, this is hospitality. This is generosity. I'm going to receive it well. There is more at stake. Did you get that steak? Um, than, our, than our taste buds. Do not move from house to house. Focus on that relationship. Invest your energies there because we can dilute our impact if we're trying to build these meaningful relationships with every single person. Where is the person of peace? God, I, I want that person because there will be fruitfulness from there. There will be kingdom impact. There will be viral explosion of the gospel from there. And I'm looking for that. 
Jesus said, when you enter a house, so his concern is the whole house. His concern is all the people in that house, not only the person of peace. It starts with the person of peace, but it is through the person of peace that the house can be reached. And in those days, the house, it's, it's immediate family, it's extended family, it's workers. We, we still have that going in, in Dar even up till today. So it's, it's, it's like a network of people, but it starts with this person of peace. And from there, we, we get into the, the network, into that community. In verse 8, it says, When you enter a town and are welcomed, eat what is offered to you. The house where you find the person of peace allows the 72 to impact not only the house, but the town in which the house is found. So he's saying, listen, you, you will enter a house, but the house is actually in a town. And through that house, you can reach a town. Through that house, you can have access to a community. Through that person of peace. That person is a gateway into a whole community. And food is clearly a way of connecting. Eating is mentioned twice in this passage. So Jesus was saying, a sign that you have found a person of peace is that they will show you hospitality. They'll be willing to serve you. They'll be like, hey, I, I want to serve you. I want to show you hospitality. I want to welcome you and, and, and share with you. That's an indication that, that that's a person of peace. And our last verse is verse 9 which says, heal the sick who are there and tell them the kingdom of God has come near to you. Jesus told his disciples to heal the sick. When he sent out the 12 apostles in the previous chapter, he gave them the same mandate. He said, go and proclaim the kingdom of God and heal the sick. The person of peace can be a, an opening for God's power to work in miraculous ways in the sick, in the community. For Jesus, the advance of the gospel goes hand in hand. Is that the wind of the Spirit blowing? The advance of the gospel goes hand in hand with signs and wonders, with healing. It's like, man, you, you, you read through the Gospels and, and Jesus is proclaiming the Gospel of the Kingdom and is healing with signs and wonders. And he says to the 72, you guys must do the same. You must heal the sick. So as the person of peace gives us access into a community, we, we come to the sick and we say, what is going on? What's wrong? Is there anyone sick here? Yes. Let's pray in Jesus' name. Lord Jesus, we come against the sickness right now. We pray, be healed. We pray the prayer of faith. We believe, Lord, that you said that we would do even greater things than you did. We lay hands now. We say to the sickness, be gone in Jesus' name. Be healed. We, we, we assume that we are called to pray prayers of healing. And we pray, and some will be healed. We must believe that. And others may not be healed. But you know, even the fact that you said, can I pray for you? Just that compassion and that care to say, I actually want to pray for you. That in itself touches people's lives. I, I've not had many people refuse prayer for healing. There is one person, and he's actually my neighbor at, at our church office. He told me he doesn't want me to pray for him when he was sick. So we have something to work through there. He's the only person I can remember. Most people will agree to prayer for healing or any other issue that they might be facing. Jesus says, tell them that the kingdom of God has come near you. Pray for the sick and tell them the kingdom of God has come near you. How did Jesus begin his ministry? He began his ministry by telling people that repent and believe the good news for the kingdom of God has come near. This, this message of the kingdom of God, it's, it's like so central to, to Jesus' life, to Jesus' message, to what Jesus came to do. 
He is about the kingdom of God. So when, 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 when we see here that Jesus says to the 72, go and tell them about the kingdom. He's saying, go and tell them about the rule and the reign of God. That's what the kingdom of God is. It's God ruling. It's God reigning in people's lives. And tell them that the kingdom has come near. It's, it's come in a way like it's never come before. In Jesus, the kingdom is here. It has come in a way that we haven't seen it before. Tell them that is what has happened. The kingdom is near. And as the kingdom breaks in, there's signs and wonders. There's healings. As the kingdom breaks in, there's repentance. People confess their sins. People say, I see that Jesus must be Lord. Jesus is supposed to be king over my life. The kingdom has broken in. The kingdom has come. Tell them the kingdom has come near. We're a people of the kingdom. And, and, and our king has authority. And, and, we, and we walk in humility and grace and love, but we also walk in the authority of our king. He's, he's given us delegated authority. He's given us a mandate to be agents of that kingdom, of that kingdom advancing. And as the kingdom advances, the gospel is spreading. The gospel we're spreading is the gospel of the kingdom of God. We don't separate the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ from the kingdom. The two go hand in hand. And if really we are a people of the kingdom, then it means that the king, Jesus, rules and reigns in our hearts. And we are about getting the king, Jesus, to rule and reign in the hearts of others. Tell them that the kingdom is near you. We're coming to a close. And I, I think that based on what we've seen this morning, this idea of the person of peace, in fact, I don't just think, I am so convinced that this idea of the person of peace can really help us in reaching more people with the gospel can really help us in, me, in being more effective agents of the kingdom, the rule and reign of God through Jesus Christ. That's how, the, that's how the kingdom breaks in. It's through the lordship of Jesus. As, as we come to a place and say, man, we're, we're supposed to repent. We're supposed to turn away from other things and give ourselves fully to Jesus. Say, Lord, my sins I give to you. My previous life I give to you. Even if I am a good person, even if morally I do the right stuff, I still need a king. A king who will receive me with mercy and grace and love because anything good that I could ever do will never be enough anyway. I could never be good enough for the amazing majesty and holiness of that king. So I need a king. And the way to that king, the way is Jesus. He is the king. And, and, and the way for, for this, this message to, to go viral, for this gospel to spread, it's, man, this person of peace. So my, my encouragement to us, dear friends, is as we go about this good work, we can be more strategic. We can be more direct. We can have a better plan. And one thing I want to suggest to us today in being more strategic is let's pray to the Lord of the harvest to send us out and to connect us with the person of peace. And that will be different for different one of us because each of us has a different sphere of influence. We're living in different communities, different parts of the city, but the principle applies to us all. And I think, man, what could the world be like? What could Dar es Salaam be like if each of us took a hold of this and really prayed and stepped out and trusted God and said, Lord, I want you to use me in this? We could change the city. We could change the nation. 
and we could change even to the ends of the earth. Because ultimately that's the mandate. It's to the ends of the earth. So let's go out from here and trust God for these great things because greater things are yet to come. Shall we stand together?